Now, Gangbusters, presented in cooperation with police and federal law enforcement departments throughout the United States, the only national program that brings you authentic police case history. Gangbusters has asked the Honorable Homer Casey, former sheriff of McLennan County, Texas, to narrate by proxy tonight's case. Thank you, and good evening, Gangbusters listeners. Let's start tonight's case in a small town in the ranch country of Colorado a few years ago. It was late on a Saturday night, and most of the ranch hands in for entertainment had headed home. But in front of a small house just off the square, a man dressed in boots and Levi's leaned against a street light, smoking a cigarette. Finally, he threw the cigarette into the street and walked up the front porch. Uh, wait, no, night. Come on, will you? Yes, who is it? Me, Randall, open up. Oh, okay. He ain't here. How many times do I have to tell you? But well, where is he? How should I know where he is? He said he was coming here. Listen, what your brother says and what he does are two different things. You ought to know that by now. Okay, if you see Obi, tell him I went back to Tur's cabin. I went back to get some sleep. If I see him, I'll tell him. Good night. Don't forget, it's important. Good night. Who was it, Randall again? <laughs> yeah, it was Randall again. Why didn't he go home to sleep? That's where I sent him. Some brother I got me. Follows me around like a beagle dog. Ah, let's forget about your brother. Huh, Obie? Sure, baby. Come on, sit down. Sure, baby. Nice and comfortable. Yeah. Give me a kiss, Obie. How about it, May? Suppose we forget Randall, you and me. We're starting traveling right now. No, honey, that wouldn't be any good. Well, why wouldn't it? be swell. Oh, you wouldn't want me to get mixed up in your business now, would you? You wouldn't want me to get too involved in anything. No, no. I guess it wouldn't. Wouldn't be fair. So, like I was saying, you just go out with Randall and do what you have to do. I'll be sitting and waiting for you to come back. There's nothing else for me to do. Just sit and wait. Oh, no. It ain't that bad, May. This ain't such a bad time. What's good about it? Well, I got an idea. What, honey? Home. How'd you like to go back to Texas? You'd have plenty to do there. You mean you'd send me? Sure, I'd send you. Take a little visit, you come back here to Colorado. Then everything's okay. Oh, but visits take money. Well, I got money. Oh, I need money for clothes and everything. If I'm going to visit home, i got to have good clothes. Well, you got pretty good clothes, haven't you? Yeah, but, well, you know, there's all kind of expenses. How much uh, do you think you'll need, May? Oh, I don't know, honey. Five or six hundred? Well, we'll kind of low ourselves right now. Randall and me, we only have about uh, four hundred altogether. We ain't been out on the job in a couple of weeks. Well, I guess four hundred will have to do. Uh, but, but, May, I... All right. It's perfectly all right, honey. I'm sure I can get by on four hundred. That is, if it's okay with Randall. Look, we don't have to worry none about Randall. I carry the money. I always have. Oh, babe. You're a darling. A real darling. Craig Henderson. Yeah? Uh, telephone. In the booth there. Who is it? Long distance. Colorado. Some town out there. Okay. Colorado. Is she... Hello? Frank, darling? I thought I told you not to waste any more dough on long-distance calls, May. Frank, honey, I'm coming back. I'll be there in Waco the day after tomorrow. Hey, now, let's get something straight, baby. If I gotta pay your way, you stay up there. Oh, I got my way paid all right and plenty to spare. Yeah? Who's the chump? A guy named Obi Thronberg. Will you meet me at the train, honey? You know where to find me. 
I'll see you when you get in. I said I'll see you when you get here. All right, honey. I love you. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah, but every cent you got to give her. Will you shut up about it, Randall? Half of it was my dough. You could have thought of that. Listen, brother, no, brother. I'd just as soon throw you out of this car as look at you. Okay. And to top it off, we got to put our guns in soak to buy gas. I told you to shut up. Well, okay. What happens now? We got no money. We got no guns. What happens? I'll tell you what happens. Yeah, you tell me. I heard some talk about an old sheep herder lives out there near Hayden. What do we want with a sheep herder? He gets good pay every month. He ain't spent a cent of it in years. He must have a couple of thousand around his shack. Just where'd you hear all this? I heard it. And he's got guns. Well, that's something we can use, all right. How'd you figure on handling? Easy enough. We start out friendly. We ask if he knows of any work around. Uh-huh. Uh, how much money you say he's got? A couple of thousand. Okay. Now, listen. I want my half plus the 200 of mine you gave to me. We'll see. We'll see nothing. I get it or nothing do. Now, listen, Rand. You get what I want to give you. You understand that? I get what's mine. In a minute, I'll stop the car and let you know what is yours. Okay, go on. Find a sheep herd. Talk about it later. car's kind of heated over. We were wondering if you could uh, spare some water from your well. Yeah, help yourself. Uh, the only thing is, we ain't got a thing to carry the water in. No, you ain't, huh? Nope. Well, there's a bucket inside you can use. Come ahead. Look, Blind. Well, go on in, strangers. Yes, yeah, There's the bucket hanging. Okay, I'll get it. Yeah. You boys from around here? No, we're Texans. Oh, Texans. Yeah, we're looking for work. You won't find much work in this part of Colorado. You don't know any of your friends can use a couple of hands. Sheep men don't have no friends. Rather, a sheep men don't want no friends. Well, you got your bucket, get your water, and don't forget to bring the bucket back. Yeah, we'll bring it back. Thanks. Grab him. Hey, watch it. I got to Turn me loose. Turn me loose. Get up, old man. Rotten good for nothing prairie dog. Shut up. Now you shut up. All right, listen to me, old man. Where's your money? I ain't got no money. You got thousands. Let me go. Hold still. Where's your money? I got no money except what's in my pocket. Well, let's see what's in your pocket. You stay out of there. I told you to hold still. Ah, ah, here it is. How much? How much is it? Twenty. Forty dollars. Where do you keep it, old man? That's all I got. Set him down over there. Come on, old man. Come on. Turn me loose, you. Turn me loose, will you? Now sit down. There's some rope over there. Get it. Yeah, okay, I'll get the rope. Now listen to me, old man. Where's your money? You got it. The real money. Where'd you hide it? I ain't got no more. Oh, you ain't. <coughs> This rope you wanted? It... Hey, what do you want to knock him out for? Don't ask me questions. Get him tied up. And we get what we came for. Map says stay on 40 and it takes us right into Salt Lake, Obi. I don't think I want to go to no Utah. No? Where do you want to go? Back to the tourist camp. Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. Might be a while there for me, saying whether she got home okay. She got home okay. She could get any place on four hundred dollars. We're going back to the tourist camp, Randall. Honest to we tie up that old man and leave him to die, we'll get forty bucks and an old rifle. You gotta see if there's a telegram and the thing we should be doing is getting out of Colorado as fast as we can. We'll get out, don't you worry about it. What else is there to worry about? Now listen, Randall, I told you not to give me no trouble. Now don't. How could I give you any more trouble than we got? Go on, get your telegram. Then let's get out of this state while we still can. Well, 
Well, gangbusters listeners, these brutal killers, the Throneberry brothers, felt secure on the assumption that they left no clues for the authorities. But when they left their victim to die, the most important clue of all they took with them. Now back to gangbusters. Here again is the narrator of tonight's case, Sheriff Homer Casey of Waco, Texas. As I was saying, Obie and Randall Throneberry killed and robbed a helpless sheep herder in Route County, Colorado. By the time the crime was discovered and the alarm spread, the two killers had left the state of Colorado and crossed into Wyoming, where they appeared in the town of Rollins. The two brothers had parked their car in front of a hardware store and were walking to the door carrying an old rifle. We ain't far enough away, Obi. Wyoming's not near far enough. What are you scared of? What do you think? Shouldn't have wasted all that time going back to get a wire that wasn't there. Well, don't give me no more headaches. I've got enough. Go on in. Okay. Gotta wait a while. Morning, fellas. Howdy. Can I get you something? Yeah, we. Uh... I'll tell them. We want some cartridges, this here rifle. Three or four dozen. What caliber? It's a thirty-two forty, I think. You think? Yeah, we uh, just bought it. Off an oil man out near Saratoga. Uh-huh. What make rifle is that? Winchester. Let him see you, Randall. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, I can get you something to fit it. Maybe this is an old timer. How do you like that homemade sight? <laughs> Couldn't have paid too much for this rifle. No, not too much. Well, can you fit it with cartridges, or do we have to go someplace else, huh? No, you don't have to go any place else. Yeah. Here's some of it. All right, the two of you, get your hands in the air. Hey. Get them up. What's this all about? I'll tell you what it's all about. I'm a deputy sheriff of this county. So what have we done? Just keep those hands up. Okay. I saw a report this morning of the killing over in Colorado. They found an old sheep herder murdered. And this rifle answers the description of the one he owned. You two are going to spend a little time in the county jail till we find out for sure. Now, look, Just master. keep them up. Now, both of you march out that front door. Go on, march. Well, gangbusters listeners, that rifle was identified as the one taken from the murdered man. Obie and Randall Throneberry were charged with murder and taken from Wyoming to the Route County, Colorado Jail in the basement of the county courthouse at Steamboat Springs. A few weeks later, while they were waiting their trial, the two brothers were in their cell. Randall, on his cot, was reading a magazine as Obi walked over to him. Randall. What? Give me that magazine. I'm reading it, can't you see? You had it long enough. Give it here. Listen, I had enough of your bossing around. You see where it landed us, don't you? I want that magazine. Why don't you go read the letter you didn't get from me? That's enough, Randall. Sure, we're in jail. They're going to try us for murder. She'd send us some money because we're in trouble. She didn't get my letter. She got it all right. She's nothing but a rotten little Okay, look. Randall, you ask for it. Keep your dirty hands off you me. You ask for it. Lay off. I'll show you. Get away from me, Obi. Get away from me. Get away from me. Oh. Hello, Sheriff Parker. Matter. Can't you two get along? Well, we get along all right. I want to be moved out of here, Sheriff. Put me someplace else. Well, well, we're all right, Sheriff. Just a little family argument. Now, listen, Obi. Everything be okay. Believe me, Sheriff. Okay, boys. Don't give me any more trouble. We won't, Sheriff. What's the idea, Obi? Now, listen. Whatever's between us, we can settle later. Just figured out how we can get out of here. Yeah? How? Huh. We start a big fight. The sheriff will come in to break it up. I'll grab him. You slug him. Yeah, but how we get outside? Two deputies have gone out on a call. I heard them leave. The sheriff's all by himself. All right? Yeah, I guess so. Then let's go. Give me that magazine. Stay off! Stay off, man. Give me Give me that magazine. Give it here. Come on, give it here. Stay you. off, Obi. I'm going to kill you. He just tried. I'm not. Come here, loose. Come here, loose. I'll show you. Hey, who? Cut it out. Okay. Break it up. I'll turn him loose. Jump him, Obi. Hey. 
Let go. What are you doing? Let go. Slug him, slug yeah. him. Yeah. I guess him again. Yeah. He's out. Let's look for his car keys. He's got a 45 automatic. Good. And some money. Here's a roll of money. Yeah, and his car keys. Let's get a move on. Now, wait a minute. Come on, if we're going. Those deputies won't be back for a while. We lock him in. Lock it with the key. I need to. Snap lock. Go on. Usually parks his car right out in the yard there. Okay. But listen, Obi. What? We ain't going to Texas. What's the matter with Texas? Because if you go to see me, we'll wind up right back here in a jailhouse. Texas is an awful big place. We'll settle it later. Let's get out of here first. Come on. To it. We got a fast car, we got good guns. We walk in and take their money, and then we head back towards Dallas. We ought to head out of Texas. I didn't want to come back to Texas in the first place. Well, we're here. You know, I begin to think something. What? You didn't drag me down this way to pull no job at all. You drug me down here so you could see May. Okay. I drug you down here so I could see May. What are you going to do about it? We're going to get this settled right now. You bet we are. Go on, get out. Obi, take that gun off. Me. Get out. Look, I'm your brother. I could still spit on you. Get out, you yellow livered little punk. Get out. Yeah. But listen, Obi, you wouldn't kill me. Wouldn't I? You need me. You need two to work the way we've been working. I'm sick. Sick of your yapping. Go on, walk. Yeah, but you need me, Obi. That's what you think. I'm going to the town of West. Jack Bush is just itching for the chance to join up with me. Now, walk. Listen, Obi. Walk. Straight into them woods. Obi, I... Shut up. You give me a chance, won't you? You wouldn't kill your own brother without a chance. Okay, you got a chance. Start running. Obi. Start running before I change my mind. Yeah, yeah. Yellow livered punk. Brothers, brothers, huh? Answer that, will you, May? Sure, Frank. Right away. Hello? May? Yeah. Who's this? It's Obi. Obi? Yeah, baby. Did you hear about me breaking out? Yeah, I heard. I got a surprise for you. I'm back in Texas. I'm right here in Waco. Yeah? Yeah. How about me coming over? No, you better not do that. I think the police are watching the place. Uh-oh. Well, uh, where can I meet you? Look, you know that chili parlor over in West? Yeah, I know it. Well, we'll make it there. How three o'clock? Okay, I'll be there. I missed you awful, baby. When you didn't answer my letter from the jail... Listen, and... Obi. Better not talk on the phone too long. Yeah, honey. Uh, three o'clock in West. Goodbye. Who was that on the phone, May? Nobody, Frank, honey. Just for me. Well, don't keep the phone tied up all day. I got important calls coming through. All right, honey, I won't. The book, the book. Yes, yes. Ah, Sheriff's Department, Waco. Operator, Waco 471, please. And hurry. Sheriff's Department, Waco. Sheriff Casey speaking. Look. You want a tip? What kind of a tip? You ever hear of Obi Throneberry? You'll have to speak up louder, lady. I can't talk any louder. Obi Throneberry. They want him in Colorado for a killing. What about him? He's going to be in West, 3 o'clock at that chili parlor. Ellis's. Who is this talking? Never mind who. I did your favor. Ain't that enough? Well, that's that. Now back to Gangbusters. Sheriff Casey, I ain't seen you in the cafe for some time. Deputy Owen. How are you, Mr. Ellis? Mr. Ellis? Yeah, fine, fine. How about you two sitting down for a nice lunch? Nettie's cooked up some of her awful good chili today. Well, we don't have time today, Mr. Ellis. 
see, uh, we're looking for a fellow. He's supposed to come in here at 3 o'clock. Oh? We'd like to sit in the kitchen until he walks in. Why, sure, fellas. Is it anybody I know? No, I don't think so. This is a guy from out of the state. A guy named Obi Throneberry. Did you say Obi? That's right. There was a fellow in here a while ago. Huh? He asked could he use the phone to call Waco, and I said sure. I heard him say his name was Obi. Is that so? He rushed out of here. He was mad as a Brahma bull. Uh, is this a picture of that man? Why, uh, yeah, Sheriff. That's him. He rushed out of here mad, huh? That's right. Said he had a date for later. He wanted to use the phone to call his girl to ask her to come earlier. I think he called her and got a man on the phone. How long ago? Oh, not 15 minutes back. Which way did he go, do you know? No, he didn't. Uh... Hey, his car was parked right out in front. What make was it? A uh, Pontiac, I think. Yeah, a maroon Pontiac with Oklahoma plates. Uh, thanks a lot, Mr. Ellis. Owen. Yes, Sheriff? Get the car started. I'll phone in a radio alarm, then we'll take out after it. Sure thing. Don't look too good, Marks. He might have taken out the other way. Well, maybe one of the state highway patrol cars will spot him up the line. Maybe. But I'd sure like... Sheriff. Yeah, I see him. That's the car, all right. Yeah. Oklahoma plates and everything. I'll try to get up to him. That won't be hard. He's all alone. I'll give him the siren. Uh, Why not hold it a few seconds, Sheriff? He still might be able to pull away from us. Yeah. Siren now. Picking it up. We'll stay right with him. Might be too fast for us. I'll keep on top of him. You try a shot. Try again. You got him. He's going in the ditch. Hold on. Come on. Watch him. He's got a gun. Yeah. Uh, Drop that gun there. It's dropped. Let's get him. Okay. Okay, I'm all shut up. Take it easy, you'll be more shut up. Oh, it's just his hand, Sheriff. I tell you, I'm all shut up. I'm dying. You're not dying, Throneberry. Not yet. Come on now. Get out of the car. Yeah. All right. We got to get you in shape for that nice long trip you're going to take. That trip all the way back to Colorado. Now go on. Walk to the car. Didn't you hear the Sheriff? He said walk. Well, gangbusters listeners, that was how the killer Obi Throneberry was apprehended. His brother Randall was arrested by FBI agents later on a farm where he'd gone to hide. Each of these murderers is now serving a term of 43 years imprisonment at the Colorado State Penitentiary in Canyon City. Well, thank you, Sheriff Homer Casey, for this case history. And gangbusters congratulations to all the law enforcement officers who participated in putting these notorious Throneberry brothers behind bars. Tonight's gangbusters case was dramatized by Stanley Niss and directed by William Sweet, with Ralph Bell and Art Carney in leading roles. Don Gardner speaking. Gangbusters is a Phillips H. Lord production.